It's high time for grade 10 students. Welcome back to the online lessons. First of all, let's see what we have done so far in this year and what we must do further. Here you can see the list of the units that we must complete in grade 10 and 20 lessons here. We have done almost more than half we have done here. Uh, chemical basis of life completed and motion in a straight line, structure of matter, Newton's laws of motion, friction lesson and the plant animal cells and quantification of elements, characteristics of organisms, resultant force and chemical bonds and turning effect of a force, equilibrium of forces and finally we have done biosphere lesson so next we will start I think you have already received the tute of this lesson 14th lesson that is the continuity of life now let's see what we have to study under this lesson the continuity of life first of all let's go to this introductory page and this is today's plan continuity of life this lesson again divided into several subunits. Let's see them first. We have to have small description or basic introduction to the reproduction and reproduction of plants. We will discuss as this 14.2. There are two ways of the reproduction in plants: vegetative reproduction and the sexual reproduction. We will discuss them under two lessons as two lessons go to the next one reproduction of man this topic also we divide into two as the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system last theme of this lesson is the 14.4 sexually transmitted diseases so this is the plan and our today's plan is the completing this basic introduction or this reproduction now let's move on to that part reproduction you can see several pictures here those, those drawings show several type of reproduction occurring the, all these examples are animals and uh, the reproduction occur in different animals and we can discuss what is reproduction by studying these examples here the first one you can see this animal is a kind of cnidarian or a cylindrate and that is called a hydra you can see how hydra reproduce and this is planaria these are birds and cats Let's go to the description basic thing. Reproduction is the life process in which living things give rise to individuals of their own kind. That means regrowing, reproducing their own species. It ensures the perpetuation of their own species. That means this process is very important to uh, just continue the own species or let that on a species generations to go on next one it brings about variations this is important point variations in the individuals to adapt to in the given surrounding we know that the last year I think in grade 9 also we learned that there are different genetic variations among us those variations also occur due to the reproduction Finally, therefore the individual die but the species is not extinct or not destroyed. It exists. That means the if old individuals or old species has die, the new young ones, we call them offsprings, those offsprings exist and the parents will die but these ones will grow, the new birth will come. Likewise, we can see here always giving birth to a young species or the young one or a offspring by a parental generation is the reproduction so from these examples we can see the first example you can see in this example only one parent giving 
or the producing a part this type of reproduction is called budding and making a bud and reproducing is occur in animals like hydra this organism is planaria the planaria just break down break into different parts to produce new one this is called fragmentation method and these two are very common methods as we learn and as we know this one first one giving birth through an egg or we call that as oviparity and also having directly giving birth to young ones it is called viviparity these four reproductive methods basically we can divide into two groups first two methods which occur with one parent we call them as asexual reproductive methods and the other parts you can see there are two organisms participate male and female or mother and father and this type of one is called sexual reproduction our next step is to compare this asexual reproduction and the sexual reproduction let's move on to that slide here there is a picture you can see this picture through this picture we can discuss the special characteristics of asexual reproduction if you take your tube now in the first page you can see there is a table in that table these characteristics are compared by looking at this video or the note that I am publishing after this you can complete the tube let's move on to the characteristics of this asexual reproduction first thing how many organisms or the how organisms involved in this process only one parent participate in this process you can see only one parental cell or a parent or the tissue only one parent participate to produce new young ones second cell division the method of cell division you can see that cell division shown here that cell division produced uh, from de diploid cells or two n cells another diploid cells two diploid cells this method is called mitosis method by the mitosis then there is another feature we can understand here when this asexual reproduction take place always the offsprings are similar to the parents there are no variations occur in this let's go on sex cells there are no sex cells produced in the asexual reproduction and uh, do not form gametes like sperm so ova or pollens therefore without sex cells this reproduction occur look at this the parental cell is 2n and the young cells or the daughter cells also 2n cells similar copies make next feature is the unit of reproduction they have single somatic cells somatic cells mean vegetative cells from a vegetative cell one vegetative cell new young one can produce and look at the examples in these plants you can see from one cell or one set of tissues new plants produce and here also a small bud appear in this bud can be a new plant so start with a single somatic cell or the vegetative cell time taken then as we see the process it is a simple process making a copy from parent therefore the short time is taken for this so short period is taken advantages there are some advantages in asexual reproduction look at this list one thing it's time efficient as it's occur within a short period there are the copies or the young ones produced within short period of time also it requires less energy because only mitosis process take place and sex cells do not produce they should not find for a, uh, the the spend energy to find a mate or someone therefore with less energy this process occur the other thing is no need to search a mate search for a mate only one parent can produce young ones there should not be male and female two groups that's also an advantage but there are many disadvantages in asexual reproduction let's look at them disadvantages first disadvantage is the no variations the daughter generation is 100% similar to the parental generation therefore 
uh, if there is a, as an example if you take if there is kind of plant which produce particular red color flower and their copies also produce red color flowers there will not be any variations and if there is a kind of fruit produced by a parental plant and the young plants also produce similar type of fruits therefore there are no variations without variations there is no evolution in this by this process second thing is diseases easily pass because if there is a weakness in the parental generation the young generations also definitely possess that weakness therefore diseases can easily pass and spread and uh, that's it uh, diseases easily pass from parents to offspring now we discussed some facts about asexual reproduction how many organisms involved and the cell division sex cells unit of reproduction time taken advantages and the disadvantages similar features we will discuss when considering the asexual reproduction let's move on to the next slide here the sexual reproduction this time you can see two pictures uh, three pictures actually this set shows the animal reproduction and this shows the plant reproduction sexual reproduction of animals and sexual reproduction of plants and this is the cell division method first thing organisms involved how many organisms easily you can say two parents one is a female other one is male female male two parents involved in this process cell division method both meiosis and mitosis occur because the meiosis process shown in this picture meiosis is very important to produce the sex cells or the gametes these gametes again link just like this look at the sex cells here ovum and the sperm sperm from male ovum from the female unique of that it's called fertilization here and by the fertilization then the next generation occur here it is in the plants pollen is the sex cell and it is produced by the meiosis process in male part of the flower and in the female part of the flower all are produced when these two link through the pollination process then gametes form ovum sperm pollen then ova these are called gametes and sex cells produce in this process then the offsprings they process two n cells or the somatic cells and offspring process two n cells and gametes contain only half of the chromosomes or they are haploid cells but finally organism gain full set or they are diploid unit of reproduction this is easy unit of reproduction is the male and female gametes in animals normally we call them a sperm and ovum or the ova and in plants the male sex cells or the male gametes called pollens right let's move on to the time taken and it's clear in the previous one there was a small or the short time takes short period was taken but here there should be a long time period because the meiosis pro process produces gametes that gametes again must fertilize then after fertilization then the young ones produce the young ones must become adults again so there is a long period of time taken then advantages main advantage is the variations through this process the young ones are completely different from the parental generations there are many variations because of the variations the process of evolution is will take place and uniqueness identical think about you and your parents you have your own characteristics you are made from your parents that's true then you are, you are born from the mother and father but you have differences many differences than them and unique features that is very important unique skills unique features are important for the process of evolution last one organisms is more protective 
protected. They are more protected from diseases and also the external threats because their skills are vary and also their uh, immunity or the fighting against diseases vary from the parental generation. Therefore, if one organism gets sick, there is no threat to the others because other organisms are different to that organism. And these days we are talking about that COVID-19 virus and there are some people who are resist, resisted against them or who has immunity against and the, there are some people who get suffer from the disease. It's depend, it occurred due to this sexual reproduction and these variations. Those are very advantageous facts. Finally, disadvantages. There are some disadvantages. Look at them. Requires two organisms and they need to find a mate. It's a disadvantage. Also require more energy as there is a long process and also complex process. More energy is needed for that. Those are the disadvantages. Again, as I mentioned, if you see your tube, in tube, these things are just compared as a table. And uh, if you would like, you can just uh, replay the video and note this down. If not, you can see below, I have just attached the note as, a, as an image. You can see that and copy it. So this is the beginning and there are many more to come and next lesson will be more complicated than that we will discuss about the asexual reproduction or the vegetative reproduction of plants from the next video goodbye everybody